stories are important. They're so important. We think about our time and when we were growing up, I'm sure that there were stories, not just those that we learned about in books, but the most important ones, the most exciting ones. Like, where's your family from? And the passing along of rituals, like making that special casserole dish every single special holiday. In my case, where's my, my family from? I learned an, a lot about my Uma, my mom's mom as a survivor, her mundle tort, her special recipes, and all sorts of little funny things that were actually kind of special to and, and intrinsic about who she was. And then I, as I got older, I got to see some of those funny things that my mom just loved about her and my mom's own behavioral patterns too. So it wasn't just her who did it. But the truth is, is that when we think about those same stories that our parents tell of, and our grandparents tell and the things that we have in our home reminding us of who our loved ones are, they paint a very special and unique picture. When we think about it, you can almost taste and see and recall by looking at a picture or maybe an object or a hairbrush or what have you. All of those things combine together to construct who you are, your origin story, your specific narrative that are part of your identity. For me, as you've heard, I think I've said it a few times, I'm the granddaughter of German Jewish Holocaust survivors, and that has obviously had an impact on me, probably one of the reasons why I'm on the Bema, and also some of the stories that were shared not just around the dinner table, but also interestingly enough, things that were not discussed because they were very painful. But when I ask you, and I'm, you don't have to answer out loud, what are those things for you? What are some of the things that were shared with you that helped shape your identity? Maybe it's you were a Southern Jew who grew up having family or friends who had a store in the square. Maybe you was, or as part of the fact that your family has a rich history of books or education, or maybe there's other values that were shared with you, not just you religiously, but that you can actually quantifiably identify both materially and things that were passed down and this narrative that surrounds them. And if we think about it, there's actually six of them for the Jewish people. Six of those specific stories and rituals that are attached to those same stories which really helped comprise our identity. One of them we read in detail this week in our Parsha, Parsha Bo in Exodus, it even talks about it, it gets excited, and it shares with us the very first ritual description of the Passover Seder, which we studied in Kiddush Club in chapter 12. But so we've got the Exodus from Egypt is our first one, the standing at Sinai is, that, is our second major inflection point and in story that we share. The incident of Amalek, which for some of us, if you are interested in the Bible, yeah, it's a fun one. For those of you who aren't, Amalek is just our big mortal enemy. The golden calf story, I'm pretty sure you all remember that one from religious school. When Miriam was punished for speaking ill of Moses, in case you forgot, she did speak ill of Moses and she was struck with leprosy and kicked out of the camp. And lastly, Zahor v'shamor et Shabbat, we are told to remember and preserve the Sabbath. And if you think about it, all of those stories combined help us form our inherent identity. Yes, it's crazy to think, but that's it. The Exodus, of course, I, and I, I think it's number one because it's told twice, also in Deuteronomy and Sinai is also told twice, Golden Cap, etc. And when we look in our prayer book, those same um, narrative reference points are mentioned also in our prayers. They're mentioned in the rituals in terms of how we celebrate the holidays and every little thing around who we are involves these stories to some extent. Whether it's don't be like Amalek, and Amalek was known for picking off the weak people at the back of the line, which is why he was so despised. 
was they came as the Israelites were going through and picked off the weak, weakest. Or we are idolizing something that we shouldn't, like the golden calf and not focusing on God. Or you can put anywhere, uh, any term, like capitalism, materialism, whatever it is, we're not focusing on God. But at the end of the day, all of these stories help shape our identity. They are, what we would argue, part of the brain's positive emotional construction of identity. In fact, there's a specific way that we have for creating this, according to neuro neuroscience, which I'm a, I'm a nerd, I love neuroscience. So there's four steps for building memories around narrative. There's a beginning, which we know today is the once upon a time, or if you look at the Hebrew Bible, there's stories similar in that, in that they, be, they have an opening. There's a problem. Let's look at the Exodus story. We were slaves. There's the resolution. The plagues were there to help forward us on out. And the ending. Well, we all get to live happily ever after and celebrate the Exodus. And if I looked at all of these six stories, I can apply the same thing. And I can also sit there and tell you that that helps create a map in our brains. And weaving learn, and, we, and if, we leave, if we are able to weave learning into stories, it makes learning even more exciting, activates more parts of our brain, and hooks information more strongly into that narrative template in our head. Neuroscience aside, the Bible was very good at making sure that not only do we tell the story in the Bible, we ritualize the story in the calendar and the prayer book, we discuss parts of the story around the table when we're coming together in community, it did a very good job of wrapping around the idea that this is the path, which I think is ultimately why the Torah, one of the ideas of the Torah is considered the path to living a good life. It offers us ideas of gratitude, encouragement, and I love, that's why I picked a prayer from David Dillard, this, the, the idea that we can walk along in our life and leave behind us a written imprint of gratitude of all the things that we've done surrounding our world with good deeds and love. So may we look at the narrative structure in our life, be inspired both by the Jewish aspect of it, by the familial aspect of it, by whatever part of our identity, but choose to use those pieces to remind us, even in moments of darkness, even in moments of doubt, have gratitude, encourage others, and be kind. Because after all, a little kindness goes a long way. Shabbat Shalom.